Good evening and welcome to the Select Board Board of Health uh, meeting for the Town of Deerfield, May 8th, 2019, at, uh, starting at 7.07 um, at 8 Conway Street in South Deerfield, Mass. Um, uh, this meeting will be recorded um, and I'd like to start with a Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all very much. So our, our first item tonight would be to, uh, for board reorganization. I'd like to first um, welcome our newest member, David Wolfram. For a second act. <laughs> Thank you, David. So, um, so just, a rerun. Yes, a rerun. <laughs> very excited to have you here, and I, I, I very much look forward to learning from you and, yeah. and catching you up to speed on what we have. And so, welcome. Well, thank you. Um, and then, uh, well, I'd like to make a motion to appoint Trevor McDaniel uh, as chair for this coming year. I'll second that. Thank you very much. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Hey, I'm thanks excited. Thanks for taking it on. <laughs> Happy to do it. Well, you're already in the chair. That's right. You know, <laughs> we kind of knew. It's a foregone conclusion of how this him. works, right? <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, so uh, another item we have here is the approve the minutes of previous meetings um, of August 16th, August 21st, February of, of 2018, February 20th, March 13th, March 20th, March 27th, April 3rd, and April 17th of 2019. So there's a lot of minutes that we're very grateful to get some help to catch up on. A question? We just want to thank you for the service and Thank you yes. very much. Yes. And there oh. he comes. Hey. Oh, Kip. <laughs> yeah. Waiting for him to arrive. Yeah. Thank you, Kip, for all the time you've, you've put in and all the effort you've done to support our community. So. I'm sure, <laughs> and that's not sarcastic. Um, so, um, I Gosh, don't. There was some cor corrections. Okay, let's um, hear them. But um, Do you want to go one at a time, and well, you know what though, the, uh, I left my minutes from the last time at home, unfortunately, that had the corrections. Um, can we just put the minutes off to the end, and sure. maybe I could catch up with them? Yep, there we was can. just minor things like. One of, them, one of the minutes said Lisa White instead of Sarah White mm -hmm. in relation to the MVP program. And, yep. You know, there was I a couple things. Last yeah. last time. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. We certainly can do that. Um, right. We have to wait uh, five minutes for a poll hearing. Uh, we could sign the MOU hearing. for the FERCOG. Okay. Um, just get to that. Have that in here. I think I might have just. Do you have a copy of it in here or not? Or yes, you just no, have I do have a, a copy okay. of it. It's after the full hearing materials. Okay. <clears throat> so this is it um, for regional energy planning assistance. This is actually going to be, it's an intermunicipal agreement that the town will sign on um, for, but it is funded by DOER. So the town is not obligated to any funding, but it will allow um, the uh, staff at the COG to give us technical assistance on our green communities grants for the next two years. Oh, okay, great. So they will help us write our annual reports, and if there's any grant applications, they would help us with those too. We'd love to continue with that. Um, would they be able to work with um, Dave Prickett on trying to sort out some of the energy efficient stuff that we could do down at the sewer treatment plant? Maybe. Possibly, if it's eligible yeah. for, I mean, mm -hmm. it's mostly for the, uh, for green communities assistance, but right. regional planning could be, I mean, regional energy, there's other components, so there's a lot of perhaps. There's a lot of the stuff that stuff we were trying around. to okay. upgrade mm -hmm. um, that makes sense that if we could pull it out. I mean, I, I have talked to Dave in the last couple of days, and he understands how we want to, like, segregate some of the stuff up for potential opportunities under the Green mm. Communities That'd be Act. Great so that we can keep our operational costs, or mm -hmm. lower our operational costs. Right. But also for the MVP program, you know, any kind of resiliency stuff, you gotta pull out, um, or you know, what we wanna do is, you don't wanna interrupt the flow of, that would cost money because you're doing one part versus mm -hmm. another part. Right. But the idea would be to pick 
cherry pick some of this stuff out that we have separate grant opportunities for or potentially for and and for all of us to be aware of certain things so that when it comes down the pike we can pull them out and say well, this is we'll we'll use this grant to do this part of the upgrade mm -hmm. kind of thing so i think it's a great thought great So I, I make, I make a, yeah, I'll make a motion that we, is it only, um, it's only up to $4,000 at this point, right? Correct, yeah. Okay. That's what our portion of their assistance will be. Like they'll give okay. us $4,000 worth, of, worth technical of technical assistance. 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 Right. Yep. Um, okay, I make a motion that we accept um, their technical assistance up to $4,000 for the Green Communities Act. I'll second it. All those in, any, any discussion, any more discussion on that? Nope. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Do you need a signature now? Okay. Is the electrical person here? Yes. Yep. We're, oh, I think, are. you mean for the poll hearing? Yeah, yeah. I believe so. Okay. And then I think spot for you to sign as well and David. Thank you. I don't think Beth is here. So um, let's, yeah, well, why don't we move on to the poll hearing? Yeah. So um, we, have a, we have a scheduled continuance of a hearing um, for Eversource poll hearing continuance for four polls on North Main Street. Um, North Street. Oh, excuse me, North, North Street. Um, hearing notice pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 166 and any additional thereto or amendments thereof, the Deerfield Select Board will hold a public hearing on May 1st, 2019 at 615 in the town offices, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass, on the petition of Eversource for permission to locate a line of poles, wires, cables, and fixtures, including the necessary sustaining and protecting fixtures along and across the following public way, North Street, four fully owned poles and guy wires to upgrade direct buried lines on North Street, South Deerfield. Eversource also requests permission to lay and maintain underground laterals, cables, and wires in the above and intersecting public ways for the purpose of making connections with such poles and buildings as it may desire for distributing, uh, distributing purposes. And this is a continuance from May 1st, 2019. Is, is Eversource here? Wanna yes. Come back up. Yeah. Welcome. Hello. Thanks for coming back. Here. Yes, to discuss. Um, so he did voice some concerns that everyone had mm -hmm. for this um, poll hearing line extension that we're looking to do on North Street. So we've we kind of took the design back and we looked at it from a few different angles as far as an underground route putting North Street completely underground or doing the overhead route. Mm -hmm. Got a uh, price point on both ends um, so I guess on our on our overhead aspect what we're looking to do ideally would be four poles up North Street <clears throat> that would be sufficient three-phase power to serve any building that ever goes on North Street mm -hmm. um, we can serve the new Yankee Candle service if Militech ever does an upgrade or if anybody further down ever does an upgrade we can serve them off that without with uh, minimal or acceptable rework of our lines um if we lock them in underground um we're held to dpu standards as far as how we have to build that underground mm -hmm. um which would be built similar to a downtown springfield type underground it would be um two risers which mm -hmm. would be two feeds to north, north street off of elm street mm -hmm. those would go through a series of 12 concrete encased duck bank conduits going down North Street into um, 10 foot by 12 foot manholes that would be installed in the 
in, in the town taking with cast iron covers on top of them. So it looked just like a sewer mm -hmm. manhole. Um, we would have approximately three on North Street if we were going to lock in the underground route. And what that would do for us is we would, we would feed off Elm Street down through the manholes we would feed into um, the Yankee Candle property. We'd feed back out, we'd feed over to Militech, and then we'd end back out at Elm Street so we have a loop for reliability. If we ever lose a cable, we can back feed someone fairly quickly. Yep. Um, that being said, if anybody wants to add on to that, infrastructure or build on in the future it lo kind of locks them in because we're digging the pavement that type of infrastructure would require all of north street to be repaved afterwards with the amount with the size of these manholes we were we would be mm -hmm. putting in which kind of you know if there were uh, looking at the property lines there's a couple small small parcels that could eventually be be building lots for something um we would obviously try to head conduit that way for future expansion, but there's no way to know what may be there at some time. Right. Um, so down to, that's what the DPU makes us um, do. And down to the price points, our overhead option is roughly gonna cost around $60,000 on our end to mm -hmm. bring poles up North Street. Um, and, and Eversource is picking up the majority of that cost if not all of the public taking cost because what we initially installed in 1988 um isn't up to current standards um the underground feeds off of elm street to yankee candle yankee candle the militech and it's it's not a good design for reliability we can't feed yankee candles new service off of what's there so that's why we're going the overhead route um so like i said 60 grand on that end the underground route came in around $600,000. Um, the way the DPU writes it, right out of the rates and tariffs that we sign with them, um, is we're allowed to design and build an underground line extension up a public way with a few constraints. It can be an urban area where no overhead lines exist now. It can be for highway transmission line crossings, or it could be where outside agencies or parties are willing to pay the entire cost of the underground existing facility, undergrounding of the existing facilities to not pass on to other ratepayers. Because that's just pretty much saying we couldn't bear the cost as a company for Eversource and then pass that on to the other ratepayers to put mm -hmm. the uh, lines underground. So that being said, I, I think we're at a crossroads of the overhead route can serve Yankee Candle. Um, I've heard no complaints from the abutting landowners on North Street. We've discussed it with everybody on North Street and they're all willing and accepting of an overhead pole line. Um, so that being said, the underground route, I can't pass that on to the, to the abutting property. So that if, if the town wanted it to be underground, that would be something we'd have to discuss with the town as far as the, the $600,000 cost point of putting it underground to be able to serve them. And that's, I guess that's kind of where we're at with those two designs. Is it an overhead or a full underground? So that's, that's a pretty large difference between the two of those. Um, yeah. I, I'm, as I said before, I'm not in favor of putting um, new poles where we don't have them now, uh, where you already have underground. Um, so I would, Billy, are, are you are you here to talk about what's going in there, and would you would you want to? I own the property at 22 Elm, and you oh. say you talked to the abutters, didn't talk to us. Okay. So the abutter cards would have went out to everybody who's on whose yeah, land touches. You talk to so I talked to Yankee Candle directly and um, Militech directly, but we didn't talk to anybody off of off of Elm Street. Is that your house right on the front there? Yes, it's okay, so. They would your be side. on the west side. The yeah, up up past where your property starts. The first pole would land. The first pole would land. Probably on the property line between yourself and Yankee Candles property. That's where the first pole would land. I believe that's where it's staked. I see. But but you you had said you talked to us, but you never did. 
you yeah, correct so when I discussed it with when I discussed it with Yankee Candle we were going to send a butter notices out and generally the abutters come to the polling I wasn't at the last one I don't know if you came to that last one no I didn't hear about it but I knew about this one so okay. that's why I'm here yep I, that's why I have a question okay <laughs> so you anticipate that high, high increase of amperage use over in that area so currently Yankee Candles fed off a 75 kVA transformer um, minimal power usage we're going to a 2500 kva transformer it's going to be the max size service we offer as a company uh it's going to be a 3000 amp main switch right now they have a they have two 600 amp switches which diversified end up roughly accounting to one 600 amp switch so they're roughly adding load times five if not greater okay there's no waiver or appeal process with dpu not as far as as, as far as who would be paying for the underground process? No, um, the requirements for that kind of build out. Well, the, the requirements for that kind of build out lock down, if we're, lock, if we're essentially locking North Street down to an underground design of underground facilities for the next, could be 100 years in that, in that area. So we have to build it as a company and to DPU standards that if more commercial buildings come on, we can feed them and that, that type of infrastructure would be needed to serve them, to, to serve those other com, uh, customers. So really, if we, want, if we want to be supportive of bi our businesses in town, we have to go uh, overhead is what basically what you're saying. We have no choice. Overhead or underground will support the services that are going on North Street. Overhead is, is the cheaper option, the more flexible option if someone were to build onto an overhead route it's it's as much as them digging up to the existing pole versus digging up uh, you know a large chunk of concrete encased ductwork to redo it. So yeah, overhead is the overhead is the the best route to for flexibility in your in on that street. Get fed off the Amherst leg or Greenfield leg. What's that? Sorry. What leg is that fed off of Amherst or Greenfield? The I don't have the circuit info in front of me, but that would be fed off of Greenfield, I believe. So there's no other way to come. You can't come ba come back down. You have to come off. You have to come off Elm Street. Yeah, because I you're talking about coming the other route. I think the other route it, there's a there's a s brook. There's a brook that we'd have to cross, and then also coming the other way would be a railroad up if we came up the other way. So yeah, that that's the only route that we would have to bring lines. I just hate, I, ha I hate to go uh, put poles above ground when we had stuff underground, though. Can we take a couple questions from abutters first? Does it have to go on the west side? It can't go on the east side? So going on the east side, we were trying to minimize guying. If you see, you know, guy wires out there on poles, if we come right off of the angle that's off of that Elm Street, North Street pole, that's a very congested pole as is right now. So we're, our plan was originally to come off and go up the east side, but what that was gonna entail would, because of the angle of the lines, the way we'd be shifting them, we would need a down guide, which, were, which would go like in the center of North Street. So we, obviously we can't guide into the road, so we would need a push brace. And that would be another 40 foot pole at an angle, kind of in front of the barbecue shop. And that's definitely not a great site. So what we decided we would do is we, we could shift the lines. There's a guy wire on that pole right now. We could actually remove, put the first pole in between your property and Yankee Candle's property. We, we would have one uh, sidewalk guy right there we would put. So it'd come down to a pipe and it'd come straight down. So it's less intrusive on the land. And then we'd go straight up from there with no more guy wires. If we were to be on the east side, we would need a guy wire and a stub and a push brace on that first pole and then we'd go up we'd have to hop the street again to feed Yankee Candle and then we'd have to hop back over to feed Militech so we'd be kind of doing a, a zigzag and every time we zigzag we need more guy wires and it just we were trying to keep it as as appealing as overhead lines can be for that design. Bill if, if we continued this would this have a huge impact on your operation? Well I mean we've got a, a deadline we've already started construction over there you know, contingent upon getting 
you know, the, the correct power there. When this, this property was built out for elder lumber back in the, the late 80s, yep. they used it as a, a retail shop and, you know, a lumber yard. Right. And so since we acquired it in the early 90s, you know, we've been limited to what we could put in there based off of the, the low voltage and the electrical supply. All the equipment we buy, we pay more money for because, you know, we can't get three phase. We've got to, you know, get smaller, you know, units and stuff like that. So uh, we worked very hard to uh, bring some jobs back to Waitley and Deerfield from corporate that were sent out for uh, an R&D new product development. Uh, a lot of our marketing and uh, new product development people end up going to Kalamazoo, Michigan. And we're trying to bring those people back. And by, by upgrading this site, we'd build out what used to be the barn area, the drive-through, yep. where all the, yep. the uh, number two pine and plywood mm -hmm. is. You know, that's an unconditioned space right now. So, you know, we'd be looking to air condition that, and that's where, you know, it's probably about, you know, 15,000 square feet of area that's not conditioned today. And that's why we've been asked to get additional, um, you know, power from Eversource to that site. And that would allow us to actually upgrade some of the other equipment in, in the other occupied areas. So, and as Nick said, what, what we found out going through this process is, you know, the power came down North Street into the transformer on Yankee Candle property, and that feeds the, it used to be the Louis and Abercrombie building, which now Militech moved into across the street. So it comes onto our property to feed back across to theirs, you know, and this would clean a lot of that up. It would also allow for expansion. You know, Blake Gorey just bought the Deerfield Refab mm -hmm. building. So if he wanted in a couple years to expand, you know, the underground route would limit him. You know, he wouldn't do that. And then, you know, there is that, that vacant lot between Militech and the, the barbecue place. So if mm -hmm. someone wanted to go there, you know, that would limit, you know, any type of expansion there. Right. Did I understand you to say that's no three-phase power down there? I think it's three phase, but it's 208 and you want 480. Correct. Oh, yeah. so it's not the four. Yeah. Yeah. How many jobs do you think you're bringing back? Well, we've already, we've added a lot of the jobs up at the office building now. Uh, we've probably added, I'm gonna guess between the new product development, brand development, and R&D, probably 30 jobs plus over the past 18 months. Mm -hmm. So, and then this would, would actually increase, you know, on top of that. So, and they'd eventually move move to that area. You'd yeah, and I mean, you know, and I'll be honest. I mean, we fought hard to keep this up here. Uh, mm -hmm. Right. You know, there's other uh, under the home fragrance umbrella. They own Chesapeake Bay Candle now and yeah. Woodwood Candle, one in uh, Virginia, and one in uh, Maryland. Yeah. You know, and you know, labor's cheaper down there. Yeah. So you know, we've fought really hard to, to right. keep these jobs in Deerfield. Right. So and to reinvest in that building. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that's a. It's about a five million dollar project we're putting in there. Right, right. So, so I did you want me to just give so, you a little bit yep. of Yep, uh, please I'm, go ahead. Just give it another question. The first poll, that would actually be on Yankee Candle property. I'd have to see exactly how it wheels off here. I believe when we staked it with the lot lines that are out there, we try to get them right on the property lines and that way if if you know that property owner ever wants to do an upgrade or Yankee Candle, we could come off that pole and feed both houses if necessary. So if, if you know you ever wanted to put an underground service to your house, she could come off the pole directly versus needing to come down the town taking and cut in. Uh, and that's typically how we design those. And we're not opposed if you want to shift it over a couple feet on our property to to keep off in the butter. I mean, we're more than willing. Yeah, I think. I think we went like right around 175 for a span length off the Elm Street pole to that pole. So that's that's getting long, but we we could shift it five, ten feet a little farther, back a little more if need be. But that was the the best spot for that angle because when if we do get these poles, that Elm Street North Street pole, that's going to be a Verizon replacement, um, and that's going to be quite a pole to change. Uh, we're, we're once this. You know, once we figure out this design, I guess regardless of the design, that pole will have to get changed, and that's going to be quite a pull. I think we're going to have to do it on Sunday with Verizon just because of how much that. customers it's going to affect to, right. to replace that pole. Mm -hmm. Annalee? Yes, Annalee. Annalee, Annalee, why don't you come up to just the... Use the mic so what happens is people you. can't hear you on TV, so... 
you can come up and use a mic. Thank you, Annalee. I'm sorry to make you come up, but it's a good way to ha have people hear you. Annalee Wolf Cole from Four Mountain Road. Um, I found your initial presentation very difficult from the standpoint, if I understood you correctly, saying that if we already had polls in town that um, we pretty much were bound to the plan of having continued polls unless we were to have this exorbitant tenfold increase in cost. Um, that feels almost like blackmail by Eversource of not letting towns move forward with their visions of trying to be desirable. Um, so I do, you did mention also that if in fact the town required underground, then that meant you would need to talk with the town. So that's probably my first question is, that sounds like perhaps there's some room for negotiation. And I also wonder if it has to be an all or none thing, <clears throat> if it's either all the poles or all underground. I mean, if, if there is some sort of a middle ground where we don't have quite this impact on what we're trying not to have in our town. Yeah, no, I, and I see what you, you know, you're talking about as far as the overhead poles and the underground locking it in. I mean, those, those standards come from the DPU who regulate what we can and can't pass on to other customers. I mean, if we, if we as a company were to say, we're gonna carry the any cost of putting a town underground, that gets passed, passed right across our entire rate base, which, which wouldn't be a fair ask for somebody in Greenfield to cover the cost of somebody in Deerfield to put the lines underground. Um, so like I said, that's right from the, the DPU standards that they hold us to as far as, these are right from them as far as if, if there's no facilities there and we want to talk about going on around right from the start, that that's one option. Or if, if, there's, if there's existing overhead there now, and I'm not saying it's a whole town-wide thing, but it's typically a street-wide thing and it's usually a thousand feet at a time. And that's, that's also right out of the DPU standards is, is if we're converting to underground, it's a minimum of a thousand feet of, a, of roadway just so we're not piecemealing it and having, you know, we, we wouldn't want to put a riser on, on uh, Elm Street at the inter North Street intersection and, or come up one pole and then go a manhole section with 200 feet. It, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be an effective design for anybody on that street. So you're saying there really isn't a cost effective way for us to have some of these be underground? Correct, yeah. For, for at least North Street. I mean, I think you have to take a lot of the areas case by case, but 1,000 feet is the rough number, is trying to get 1,000 foot chunk at a time. I know I've been contacted by the um, DPW to discuss, you know, a, a, just a rough ballpark of what it would be to bury the lines from the town common up to the railroad tracks. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that would obviously be a 1,000 foot chunk, um, but just trying to get a number out, um, we have to put a pretty in-depth in design to give someone an accurate number. And, and of course, because those lines are existing overhead, to put them underground and build it for the next 100 years, it, the, the price points are pretty high. Does the DPU really consider that, since this is already underground, that we are bringing them above ground? They don't give us any break at all? Well, currently, they consider it as direct buried. So they consider it because the lines are not in conduit. They are just buried in the dirt under the concrete or under the pavement. Um, so they, they, won't, they, they won't give us a break as far as what we could pass on to, you know, to absorb ourselves for that, for that cost. Because right now, what was put in in 1988 cannot serve the service that's being requested on North mm -hmm. Street. Um, if it was in conduit, that might be a different story as far as if we could if we could feed them or if it was maybe if it was a private road, that might be a different story. But it being a town road, we have to build it. If we're gonna go underground, we, we have to build it for the next hundred years of you know, like we said, there's there's mm -hmm. vacant lots on this there's possible build outs mm -hmm. that might happen. We have to build it for the next mm -hmm. for the future people, for the future customers. Well, I just, a couple of things. So, I mean, so Nick, I just, you did say 
that a couple times you just mentioned again that it was built in, you know, it was put in in 1988. Yep. So you didn't at that point, you know, now you're saying you have to upgrade that design because you didn't build it for the longevity that you need. Now you have to go back and build it for the longevity. So that's somewhat Eversource's investment Correct. that they need to do. So, and I just wanted to let you know that, you know, under the section about poll hearings, mm -hmm. you know, you do have some discretion, you know, you have to have some justification, but especially because it is currently underground for right. it to come up, um, you know, you do have, um, there is some case law that supports, even if it's just aesthetics. I mean, ideally if it's public safety, but if it's aesthetics, there is case law that supports, you know, not making those changes. Obviously the price price is um, relevant and I'm sure what he's saying with DPU that you know is mm -hmm. relevant but I'm just letting you know and and you know I spoke to Nick today he knows the issue with is that we are trying to move this stuff underground and so it is a little it's uh, a little you know disconcerting that now to we're going to bring it up above ground I know um, but so that's what What's I just the, let you know. do you know offhand what the appeal process is and how long it takes to DPU I don't know that I know I mean dealing with a DPU I couldn't I, I don't deal with them directly but I don't see it being a quick process but I, I don't know that answer okay so what you're saying is Eversource would not consider going underground for that first 180 feet mm -hmm. so you don't have the high uh, high power lines in front of that residence so we we don't so that would typically I guess be like a reverse riser. So we would come down on, on the corner of Elman North, we'd go over, we'd come back up. We don't do those because you gotta look at the factor of if we lose that cable ever, there's a, you know, something that happens to that cable 10, 15 years down the road, we lose all of North Street. Um, and that's not, a, that's not a good design for any, any of the customers on North Street. We lose one piece of cable, we take out the entire. But that's gonna be in either casing or something it's not going to be a direct bearing it would be in conduit but we there there are there are cables in conduit that fault all the time the the purpose of having the the duck bank set up would be we'd be coming off north street looping through all the pads and then coming back out to elm street and then we can have a source of back feed so if we do lose any cable on that run we could isolate that that faulted cable and we can refeed the customers quickly versus if we have a cable fault that feeds all of North Street, we, we, it's a large time frame for us to get that back up and running. Are there any other, are there any other questions residents would like to weigh in? So I think we'll, um, my thought is we would close the hearing and um, take it under advisement and then make a decision. Um, I don't think I have any other, I mean, it may, maybe we talk um, about the DPU wrote. Um, my, my hesitant is, is to hold up a project of bringing jobs to the town um, and, and the huge cost of putting that underground. I, I really don't want to go above ground. So I'm really torn on this, um, but I, I would like a little bit of time to think about that. Um, so I won't make a decision tonight, but uh, um, if there's anyone else that wants to. Just one other question. Mm -hmm. Isn't there like an 11-2 line on the, the north end on the east side of there, North Street already? Up north past mm -hmm. the, so there no, is a no, line it's, that. It's right there with uh, refab. Is there's right a. Area by the tracks. Yep, there's, there's a. 11-2 line there. It's third, well, I think it's. It, so it's 13.8, but it's it's ungrounded. So it's an it's an older voltage that we do, um, but the where the way it comes across the very shallow part of that brook, it's all it's all on private property. So we wouldn't. I mean, without getting an easement from that uh, landowner. It's on this side of the brook, isn't it? It's on this side of the brook, yeah. correct. So you wouldn't have to cross the brook. No, uh, but we are where that pole lays. It's on private property, not on town taking. So. It's, it's behind their building. But. So the only way to get that out to North Street would be but, to get but a. But the new owner would probably be very agreeable to have the poles run that way instead of off of Elm Street. It's a, it's a possibility we can look at with, with that owner. I mean, as far as, as far as that, we, would, we could get an easement from that owner 
it would come up to North Street and then in order to feed where, I mean, Yankee Candles property is and the Militech property, you'd still be looking at possibly two poles coming down North Street, the, yeah, but the other route. Then you wouldn't have that residential area being mm -hmm. boxed in with wires. Right. If you came in from the other side. Yeah, we And you we still can. have the, t and I didn't realize that was the 13-2, but, you know, that's, that'll service a couple 3,000 amp services, so. It would service, so bringing in a radio like that, yeah. would, like, just like we would off this side of North Street, would, would, would serve that, yeah. So, I mean, we can look at that. We can talk to the property owners. Um, Blake just bought the property, probably more than agreeable, especially if you can help Yankee Candle out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I get, I'll definitely look at that route. Just, I mean, and for a time frame aspect, just so everybody you know knows what we're working with. If if we do get, say, we do get the pole, the poles up North Street, we're roughly six to eight weeks for doing that time, doing that type of a work uh, or type of a project. The other route could be just as quick mm -hmm. with easements in place. Easements typically take about a month, maybe two months. Mm -hmm. um, so that would put us around maybe a four month time frame going that route, still a viable option. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure exactly when you guys were looking for power. Was it this year? Oh well, yeah, I mean, we're, you know, our, our moving date is September 1st, so. So, I mean, North Street, we would hit September 1. That route, I don't think we will hit September 1, but I mean, it's worth a discussion with that, that landowner and say, you know, if, if we can get an easement from him uh, to come from that existing pole, to feed down North Street, then then that's another option. Then we can you're look thinking at. maybe two poles instead of three, yeah, and not I'd, off, not all that mess on. I believe. I believe where it sits, it's it's on the very eastern side of his building. Mm -hmm. So we'd have to come, we'd have to come down south a little bit. So that would be one additional pole with a guy. We would then go west. That would be a pole on North Street if we can make that span. It looks like it's. Yeah. It looks like we can make that span. And then it would be one, possibly two more poles down North Street. So you're still talking four poles, just two of them could be on private property. Yeah, and versus then the, but the down stuff, all that apparatus would be up at the other end. Okay. Exactly. In the yeah. residential. And the nice thing, yeah, so all, all the poles will be in, well, industrial commercial area, not in where any residential area is. Sure. Yeah, I so. can definitely look at that area. Um, you Do you have a contact for him for that? Lake Corey, yeah. Okay. Okay. I've got it too. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that was my father's property there, where he is now. So. Thank you. So, um, do we want to close this? Or no, we need to continue it so that we can then sort we that can. out. Okay. That probably makes this more makes sense, most sense to continue it. So, I think you should. When is our. Uh, oh. We're meeting again next Wednesday, May 15th? Tuesday. Look at our meeting dates, I think. Oh, you wanted to look at them? Yeah. The 14th. The Tuesday instead of Wednesday if we have to meet next week. Uh, let's see. i got a school committee that night. But, um, okay. Yeah, and I think, Thursday, we, maybe? I think we have things scheduled already for oh, the you 15th. Have things scheduled we may. Already? We've already scheduled okay. out at least to the 15th. And then you have scheduled a meeting for the 28th, which is a Tuesday, the, five, right. uh, the later in the right. month. Correct. Yep. Um, Okay, well then I would, I would, you know, recommend continuing this until uh, the 15th. I don't know how, if that's enough time to figure out if you could get an easement or not, or at least talk to the resident and I can talk see to the where we're at at that point. At if if it's, I if can it's, gauge him and see if he's, if he's willing to do it. I mean, it's a, it's a full legal easement. It'll have to be, you know, surveyed mm -hmm. um, and recorded on their deed. Right. So, I mean, that process wouldn't obviously happen in that time. Right. Frame, but I might be but able if to he's open if and at it. least. We yeah. understand where we're going from there. Yep. That might be a little easier. It, it just would have s such a less negative effect on the neighborhood. And it, it just would be. You could find really a compromise. That would be yeah. great. Yep. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Appreciate it. Thanks, Bill. Bill, you want me to get a hold of Blake? Or? <laughs> Ready to go. Okay. Good. Um, so our next. Uh, so did you you voted to continue yeah, the hearing? And yes, vote to continue. Motion I'll make that. I'll go ahead. Do you want to make vote, a motion? Um, oh, make I make a motion, a motion to continue the hearing till May fifteenth. Second. Second. I, I, I just All those in favor? 
Aye. Aye. I just want to say we're really trying. I'm sorry that. <clears throat> and the next uh, next item would be the um, DPC contract award uh, wastewater treatment facility secondary clarifier engineering contract to DPC engineering or at least discussion of where we're at. Um, I think you all have a copy of the latest um, revision to the contract. Yep, I had, there had been one given previously and then an updated one, so I just gave you both because I wasn't quite yep. sure what the, so you'd have both. I'll get my glasses on, so. Um. And I've sent it to council. Um, it hit the right. same terms and conditions as the current contract we have, but I did forward it to council to be reviewed. Right. And so I would, um, I, um, I've been talking with several members of the sewer study committee um, and with Dave and just trying to um, gather as much information as I can. And I, I had mentioned that I would, um, I think the information that was, you know, they were out looking at different ideas and wanted to send some stuff to us and it. I don't think they could have gotten it done by tonight. So um, I, I was gonna try and hold off a little bit of, of signing the contract tonight and uh, waiting waiting for that information. Um, but I don't want to wait too long. We've got to get rolling on this a bit. So I was wondering if, um, you know, we could have a motion to to review and uh, sign the contract if, you know, or authorize the chair to sign the contract um, if we can get, you know, when we get this other information, if we want to move forward with this contract or as is, or, or if I get other information, I could relay it to the town administrator. I think if you're going to award it, you should say what the contract amount is mm -hmm. currently that's on I the would. table if you're going to try to negotiate it down, but at least what's been proposed yeah. at this point, because that's what you're really awarding that contract. Right. And I, I'm not, um, I think based on the negotiations we had, the, the price right now, why don't I read a bit of that? So um, the design phase uh, of the project. Um, currently is would be a lump sum total for the task of the design sub uh, sub design phase subtotal of sixty six thousand seven hundred sixty four dollars and sixty five cents um, the permitting uh, phase subtotal would be an hourly uh, subtotal hourly service um, allowance task so it's a you know based on however many hours they may need but we've got um, ten thousand uh, dollars five ten thousand five hundred and fifty five dollars and eighty nine cents um, the bidding phase um, equipment procurement because we're we're breaking out equipment procurement and general contractor bidding um, at the same time so th that would be a lump sum fee of seven thousand eight eight hundred and fifty eight dollars and seventy eight cents the um, bidding phase of the general and that's lump sum and then the bidding um, phase for the general contractor would be a lump sum of $10,797.08. Uh, the construction administration phase um, would be a lump sum of two uh, with $32,982.11. And then the construction observation phase um, would be, a, again, an hourly, depending on how many times they would need to come out. Um, and they figured $8,708.28. So, how it breaks down is the lump sum totals would be um, $118,402.62. The subtotal hourly service allowance uh, for the task would be $19,264.17, um, $19, um, which would give us a, a total right now of $137,666.79 for this this phase of the project. What's this? For for the whole project. So it was it. Yeah, this this certain uh, this clarifier upgrade phase was um, we authorized a, a million dollars, um, and that was voted at special town meeting back in March, and. Um, you know, we hope it comes in at less than that when we get all the bids back and we've. Correct. Yep. 
Correct. Engineering is about ten or so, and then the, and then you've got, then you've got the bidding and the, the other, the other stuff. So and. Uh, So I think I did want to wait for a couple of members of the sewer study committee that were passing some information forward. They were hoping by maybe by the end of the week to have that. So um, I'm okay to move forward with this, but I did want to wait and see what else, you know, came through for information. Because people were working hard to kind of look over this and several members looked at it and saw what they could come up with. So. Kip has a question. Oh, Kip. Yeah, sure. Yeah, please. Come on up. Kip Camosa, Greenfield Road. Um, my last week on the job, I spent quite a bit of time and I contacted uh, three other firms about this. And I, I guess I'd like to strongly recommend that you, you, know, you don't uh, sign this agreement until you get two other competitive bids. Uh, two reasons, one is price and the other one's performance and ethics. Uh, the price appears to me to be about four times more than what other firms are getting and about double the amount of cost to the repairs. Um, and I think it's worth looking into because there's a substantial amount of money. As far as the performance goes, I mean, back in the, about three and a half years ago, David, when you were on the board, you signed a contract for $214,000 to design the new Headworks project for that. And it came back with, you know, bid ready, docu well, bid -ready documents and, you know, completed plans. And, the first thing I noticed, it was designed for 8 million gallons a day, 10 times larger than we we're even permitted for. And, and I felt that the engineers had an obligation to come to the town and say, hey, wait a minute, I know you want to regionalize, you want to do this, but you don't even have, you know, this is 10 times larger than you need. And they, they didn't do that. Um, then, you know, when we went through the selection process, I wasn't a big fan of hiring this particular firm, but we moved forward and they did a study and uh, you know there were deadlines that should have been met and they weren't and as you know it's been 14 months and we still don't have a completed obligation uh, of the work that they performed and I just feel that going forward that we could have the same type of issues that work doesn't get done and it could be more expensive so I, I would really appreciate that you get two other bids and if you do decide to go with this particular firm that you get specific performance dates and even put in a penalty clause. Like if they say it's going to get, their work's going to get done by a mutually agreed date, say September 1, that you charge $100 to $200 a day for every day that they're not, they don't get their work done. So that, you know, they have some skin in the game to make sure that they get it done and it doesn't go further and further. I also reached out to DEP and spoke with the Bureau Chief Matt uh, Silcope and John uh, Bruchier about, you know, I know that they had conversations with this outfit and what ramifications or implications, you know, the town might be in if we changed. And they said, none at all. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, they, they have a, they want to know that the town's aware of the issues and that we're moving forward to fix it. And at that point, I told them we were. That's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. So, Bruce. Uh, Bruce Hunter, one, 103 Singully Road, South Deerfield. Um, when you went through the amounts, I had a couple of concerns. Um, you said permitting was $10,800 or something. It was allowed to, um, up to $10,555 on, an mm -hmm. on an hourly and rate. And we have the hourly rates in the contract. Uh, I do have the hourly rates. And yep. who would be performing that duty? Excuse me. Who would be the engineer? Or the who on that hourly rate schedule will be actually doing the permitting? Doing the permitting thing? Yes. Uh, we'd have to look through that, but um, you know, I've been. I mean, the issue is we want to make sure that it's done economically. Mm -hmm. We don't want the David Pritchett doing the permitting. Mm -hmm. um, it mostly can be done and reviewed by an engineer. It can be done by a staff, and the question is. How much staff do they have? Yeah, they have they have quite a few staff. They have the top level staff, and then they have uh, they have several, you know, as you said, lower 
lower paid engineers, so engineers or you know okay. yeah so the clarification on who would be doing the permitting and what hourly rates you might be charged not just these are our hourly rates mm -hmm. this is what we can charge you yep. that's all in your contract yeah I think we have all that right okay. the second was you said it was a equip equipment purchase uh, they broke. They broke out the bidding um, for equipment procurement, and then also the contractor to put it in, because we're not just replacing the clarifier. We have to put on a temporary. And we're we can't. doing a sole source permitting. Is that correct, Excuse Diana? Me. I'm sorry. We're we're reviewing it with council. We're doing the for horizontal construction. So um, uh, it's 149. Yes. Uh, no, 30 39M, I believe. That's what. Not 149 because that's that's. Well, it's what the dream building. plants are 149, and uh, if, if you're going to do a sole source permit uh, purchasing, you need to get that approved. Okay. Well, in other words, if you have specific equipment you want to put in, that's what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. that, well, we're we're going to find out. I mean, I think the the idea, from my understanding, was they were going to they were going to hopefully request a specific um, um, a specific item and then get. You get bids on that and get bids on labor at the same time. Well, there'd be two different bids. Correct. Yes. Um, you have an installer's bid, and that would be the concern. On my next item is the bidding of ten thousand dollars. Is it going to be electronic bidding? I, Through an electronic firm. I, I don't know. That typically know, I would run with a project of this size, no more than three or four thousand mm -hmm. um, dollars. Electronic bidding. So yep. I'm concerned at a, at a lump sum of ten. It's, I don't think it was. It was it a lump sum? Let me just see. Yeah. Well, the general contractor is ten. Yeah. Bidding itself yeah. can be done electronically. It can be. We don't even have to. Have, there's no hands on at all by the town. It's done electronically and it's approved by Mass D O R. And the engineers have zero involvement other than issuing. Um, Memorandums and additions. Procurement lump sum. What well, would one, well, one good thing is what you said is you have somebody from several people from the sewer committee which had this uh, general knowledge who are reviewing this. Mm -hmm. yes. And I just hope that you take um, their advice very strongly. Um, construction management at $32,000. Is a lot of money. Mm -hmm. um, observation at, at whatever price that was. That's an uh, hourly rate it's an too. Hourly rate. An hourly rate. Yeah, and again, you want to know who's going to do it, mm -hmm. what the qualifications are. Um, have they done this type of observation before? Mm -hmm. The observation has inspection has changed now to observation. There's no more inspection of the work. Observation is the engineer goes and he looks at and he sees what's going on. He reports back to the engineer in the town. Mm -hmm. This is what I saw. Somebody makes a determination whether it's right or wrong, and that would be the engineer um, at David Prickett's company. Mm -hmm. So observation, you won't have anybody on site actually inspecting the work. They'll be observing the work, and they will not be talking with the contractor. They will not be advising the contractor if anything is going wrong. We're making a phone call to their office. That's the definition of observation. Mm -hmm. And that's legal. And legally, most firms are doing that because of the liability issue. But an hourly rate, you want to make sure you know how many hours a day. Does it include travel? Yep, you're paying it does. mileage. It does. You pay no mileage? So no, it, has, it covers mileage. They, they put everything in, in this contract that we were going to need. Yep. Okay. And they, they've looked at. Um, Several other jobs. So you jobs. really don't have a, a, a you have a, a fairly good idea which they've given you. Yes. Yes. Well, and they've actually, I've been doing a lot of other, research. Many yeah. other many other uh, projects in this realm, and they're all running into this same kind of about the same kind of cost. And of course, some of the engineering has been um, we asked for based on comments to um, break out some of that from the lump sum because they may not need as many visits. Um, you know, my concern is that is that I, I just don't want to uh, wind up with 
you know, them running out of hours and not doing enough work. So I, I, want, I want to make sure that they're on site as they're needed and doing the work that's needed. My concern is nickel and diming the contract so much that you don't wind up getting good coverage. The only observation is hourly and the Correct. permitting is Correct. It wasn't hourly. before and it is now. So. I'm just saying that those are the only two hourly rates. The rest is lump sum. So you've got a fixed fee. Correct. And, um, that's a good thing, mm -hmm. which should not include any expenses. It should inc include all the travel, all that. Yes. It does. Telephone. That part does, right. And then the right, observation right. does have. That, that she, this is some of the research that um, Kip had come up with um, three sites that he had talked to Stantec about. Mm -hmm. um, Athol, Newburyport, and Portsmouth, New Hampshire. So um, we did some research on those three sites. It turns out that in Athol, they replaced the gearbox, um, not the clarifiers. And um, in Newburyport, um, that was a replacement of the gravity thickener mechanism, and there was um, not a clarifier. Portsmouth, New Hampshire, um, they upgraded the secondary clarifiers um, for $1.2 million. In, so, what, in what year were these done? Um, 2015. 2015. The, engin the engineer that, the, the major senior engineer that's come to all the meetings, Tony, was not with them in 2013. No, no, no these, these aren't these, them. No, these aren't them. This isn't them. This, this is, is the just one a that comparison Kip, Kip, had, Kip had said this was from Stantec. For a, uh, Actually, you heard this a quarter is, of the cost. Oh, I understood. Yeah. Okay. So we're trying to figure out what that Kip, meant. Kip, Kip had told me that Stantec did it for um, a quarter of a million dollars. So and we don't know who these firms. Those three firms were um, Stantec. So what, and they weren't, they weren't doing what we had to do. They had actually clarifiers. Number one, there were clarifiers there. So no one has actually they had done. had backup clarifiers. Yeah, they had backup clarifiers. Actually, and so what happened is we did more research to find out, because what we're trying to do, we don't want to spend money, too much money, but it sounds like the, um, our pricing is, is right on. The pricing that we got the, is right on. The total uh, pricing, yes. Total yes, pricing. Because these, um, Tor Torrington, Connecticut, Enfield, Connecticut, East Greenwich, Rhode Island, and Heritage Village in Southbury, Connecticut, are all in the ballpark. But the... Um, if you factored in having to do a secondary, but you know... A, a no, but none of them, none of them had any bypass, because we have no clarifiers that work, so we have to set up the bypass. I understand. And I so... Understand. And so what we're, I in this, so we're in this chart is the engineering fee. Um, oh, I don't know what the engineering fee was. Well, it's not there. It's, it's not, not there. Here. So uh, what are we talking, apples or oranges? Yeah. No, we're, t we're, talking we're talking about, about the price. The whole we're project. I understand. Total. That's fine. Yeah. I think that's great. Mm -hmm. But that, if that's the project number, we're in trouble because we only have a million. And you're talking... $140,000. No, I feel no, like he he's went gone out, He went out to this. three vendors, and, he, and we're hoping that we can do this between seven and 800000 Who went out to three vendors? Um, before uh, before he put his ballpark before. number together to give us an idea of this is going to be a million bucks. So he included he, his engineering of $140,000. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I believe yes. I mean, he looked okay. at the engineering and... But that's not what these numbers say. Correct. Those numbers are other projects, right? No, okay. All right, my, fine. My, I, I was yeah, questioning I was just concerned. The, total, the numbers that we're looking at here are just strictly engineering, yeah. uh, uh, which seems, to me seems very high because, you know, the project itself is going to be around 750 to 800 Yeah. And yes. that means his engineering fee is over 20%. Exactly. That's outrageous. It sounds very high. Yeah. No? Mm -hmm. oh, well, I, because I mean, you don't, you, we, we have a budget of a million bucks. That's what we asked for. We hope that it comes in. I, I don't want to say seven hundred fifty thousand. You don't know. Okay. Don't no, know. no. I'm just, if anything, I'm just saying, you know, if everything aligns. But, but I'm just going. You know, the total project is a million dollars. I mean, so you, you know, my if you take the hundred and fifty out of that, mm -hmm. that puts you down to eight fifty. That's what the project is. Mm -hmm. right. And we hope. Yeah, yep. the, for the the construction and everything else. Mm -hmm. And then you. His, that means his you've engineering got, fee. Well, you've got engineering, then you have bidding and, and so you have the design fee, and then you have bidding and I have and nothing, no problem with design fee. I have no problem with equipment and construction costs. Bidding is an issue. Construction management is an issue. 
and oversight's an issue. Mm -hmm. um, so those three numbers I'd be concerned about. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so you're having Josh look at this, right? He's looked at it. Uh, Eric is looking at it as well and was supposed to get some information to me, but I, they didn't think they could get it done by today. Okay. So I, I want to get moving on this um, because we're, you know, be running through the winter. and. I know, I know, I know. I feel okay. pretty comfortable, but if you guys, you know. Well, I'd like to make a motion to, um, I guess, award the contract um, to them once you've had conversation with Josh and um, Schimmel, I mm -hmm. guess we should put his name yes. in, and, and finish off with Eric Brown. Mm -hmm. I, I feel satisfied um, going through this whole thing and having a conversation with the Athol person um, that the pricing of the whole project is correct. So um, if, the, if they feel Taking Bruce's um, comments on the engineering, if you could follow up mm -hmm. on Bruce's comments. Are you clear what Bruce was talking about, mm -hmm. pretty much? Okay. Bruce, is there um, anything else you can think of that you had a concern about that we could pass on to Josh Schimmel? Josh, um, Josh has Okay. All right. So um, I would make the motion that we award the contract and get, authorize you to sign it um, when everybody has had um, input. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we, because I'm, I'm just afraid we, there's four and a half percent construction inflation at minimum, and I'm worried about the timeline of getting this done. I mean, we're going to run out of time and get in problems with DEP. And what if something else breaks? Mm -hmm. We already have this huge expense with this bypass because if we had done this a couple of years ago, we would have just reverted to another sec to our clarifier, other clarifier. And we would have been able to f fix this for half the price. You know, going through the bypass, setting up a bypass system and, you know, handling that and trying to treat it, you know, in a temporary location is terrible. So um, I don't want to lose out on our timeline here. Right. Really? You know, I do want to make a comment. When we signed the contract before, back when I was on the board previously, when we were looking at an 8 million capacity, mm -hmm. we were trying to correct what the town of Deerfield has done wrong for so many years. They've always lived for today and never for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We were looking for tomorrow so we didn't have to rebuild everything in 10 years. Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, it's... I think at the time you were looking at regionalization as well. Well, th that was part of the topic. That was uh, one of the options. But it, it uh, wasn't... But it this was just for the town of Deerfield. Mm -hmm. uh, the option could be there. Uh, but, you know, it, but for, you know, people with the septic systems, they could actually use our own facilities here mm -hmm. instead of trucking out of town yeah. uh, where we could get fees for that. Uh, so there was a lot of pluses for making the capacity of that plant larger than what we need today. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, unfortunately, I don't have enough data in my mind right now for this. Of course. Um, I know. So I'll try to catch up to speed on yeah. where we're at. But I know we're under the gun to get this project done. Uh, what I'd like to do is, once we get started on this, mm -hmm. is we need to have a set of separate meetings so we can sort of figure out how we're moving forward with the rest of the projects. Mm -hmm. And I, I had started some initial conversations with Dave how that we could break down the projects so that we could pull things out as money or opportunities came around for grants and stuff like that, like the mm -hmm. Green Communities thing or the resiliency stuff through the MVP program because, um, you know, we ha that money seems to be at least consistent, and there aren't that many communities still um, certified. So we have an opportunity there for that, and we could pull the, some of the stuff out if we could. Then we can adjust some of the timeline. Um, but we also hoping to wrap this in under the grant, three million dollar grant from USDA, and we want to if we can if we can borrow money at two percent, and you have a four and a half percent inflation construction inflation rate. 
it makes total sense to keep moving ahead. And we need to, so we need to get together really quick. And we need and, participation and, of people yeah, like Bruce to, that can look at this yeah. stuff. And we, Bruce, are so, you still are you interested in being involved at all? Uh, just as a citizen. I, exactly, but just would you be willing to look over this stuff and offer your comments? Like I, I think you have two engineers on the sewer committee that have much more capability than I do. Hmm. Well, we're, but just the idea of the timeline and stuff like that, Bruce, that would be very helpful if you could just look at it. I, I mean, I would be appreciative of it because we, the more eyes that have a chance to see what we're doing, the better. And, and there's enough people to do that. Okay. Well, we're going to have, there will be an open meeting, obviously. So maybe people can come and participate because what we want to do is make sure we, we're maximizing our opportunities for you know, grant funding and, and trying to spend efficiently as possible. So um, we'll, we'll work on trying to set up some kind of schedule in the next mm -hmm. couple uh, months, you know. I think it's really important not to let it sit, that's all. Mm -hmm. We need to, we need to get, get going and be sharp. And I, I feel really um, comfortable like this research shows that we're doing the right, you know, we're in the ballpark. There's nothing crazy about what's happening. Um, so that makes me feel good. So we just need to do this with every mm -hmm. single step so that everybody understands what we're trying to do, what, what's happening, and why you know this is more expensive than that one or whatever, where the expenses are. And having it in a simple chart form, you know, the piece of equipment itself, the replacing the clarifier, that's that's one charge, and then the bypass is a separate charge, and there's it, we don't have anybody. Tie in. And yeah, I mean nobody's mm -hmm. not had a clarifier. <laughs> True. Not, so we, you know, we're not a very good example. So we mm -hmm. need to keep moving along here. So we have a motion. Do we have a I'll second? I'll second that. Thank you, David. Um, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. I'll get back to you all on what I find. Yeah. Um, I, I think it would be very helpful if um, Trevor, if you had, if you uh, had a few minutes with David, absolutely, uh, at Happy some to point, do that. just to go over where we are. Mm -hmm. I, and um, get him. I'd love to have him get a meeting with um, Dave or, Prickett or as well. Or maybe just have a David, just at yeah. your convenience, and meet with David. Just to catch him up to speed on what we're, yeah, where we were, where we've been. Tremendously where we're going. helpful, so that we're all on the same page. Mm -hmm. um, yep. I agree. Um, so our, our next item is um, Beth Frazier and Atlas Farm is to approve a one-day special permit for beer and wine for the Garden Fest at Atlas Farm, uh, 218 Greenfield Road on May 18th, 2019. And I know that I uh, saw some email back and forth that she's been in contact with you, Diana, and she's Correct. gotten everything yes, in order? Yes, she, um, she had a meeting with the police chief, and they uh, have agreed to have a detail. They'll have oh, a, great. a detail from, I believe, 11 a.m. until 7 p.m. Okay, um, so that's great. So that uh, satisfied the chief's concerns about parking yep. and traffic issues. I know last time it was a lot of, a lot of traffic, so Correct. Mm -hmm. that'll yeah. be helpful. That'll be very helpful. And everything else he's chief's comfortable with. So. Yes. Yep. Um, I make a motion that we... Um, approve the one-day special permit. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, so um, discuss, uh, the last item on our discussion items is the uh, FY20 goal setting, determine a process for identifying goals and setting priorities. So I think it's our first meeting of the fresh new year and season um, and and just taking over as chair I felt like it was talking with Diana we, we talked about um, and, and and with other members we talked about kind of setting our agenda for the year and uh, trying to talk about the different priorities we want to tackle um, a couple of things that came to my mind right off the bat um, just just simple items by setting um, first thing I would mention would be just setting a, um, a consistent date for our meetings. 
Um, and I know that they'll change based on a school committee meeting or, you know, somebody has something out of town. That's, that's fine, but at least it gives the public a, um, a calendar. We do this for the school committee. We set every meeting for the year. So um, I would like to set those out for the year and so that we all can kind of figure where we're going to be until we get, obviously, the budget season and we yep. wind up with my, more meetings. My only, um, I have no problem except please not the Wednesday before Thanksgiving <laughs> and not we'll make the sure Wednesday we'll have a before season Christmas. Right before that. Yeah, no, of not course. the Wednesday before Christmas. Yep. And, um, and, and I know Dave has a schedule thing. Yeah, so let's, what have you got for, the, you uh, talked about Tuesdays I, maybe? Well, I work every other Wednesday. Okay, yep. So I can't, and yep. right now it's on the opposite schedule of your schedule. Mm -hmm. Oh, you not mean really the though, David, because we've been meeting every Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, we, yeah, we've been meeting <laughs> but, every but Wednesday. But if Wednesdays are no good, we could. Well, look Wednesdays at, okay. It's just that it's every other Wednesday that I can meet. Right, and then uh, it's like next Wednesday I'm scheduled to work. Okay, and we and uh, we have. Yeah, a meeting. and actually, yeah. this is the opposite schedule. Yeah, I know. Than our regular schedule. The Correct. 15th yeah. is our so normal schedule. The 15th is our regular. We, we right. just have been meeting and working, uh, right. every but Wednesday he would be for a while. With, he would be working on every meeting if he... See, wherever it's right. white on yep. Wednesday, those are the days I'm working. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I could then, come for a short time at the beginning of the meeting at those and days. So, but and you're and working what time, like these... To, any white on here you're working? When I'm working, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. And what time are you guys thinking about starting the meetings going forward? Are you going to... Well, we... Um, in the summers, it's usually seven, but that was mainly because we had somebody that hayed. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to start at six, but whatever. What, I don't what know time what, do you go to work, David? Six. Six. So but I can go in late, so uh, um, not, not, we, 10 not 10 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we could, we could meet a little bit earlier. We could meet at maybe five. Uh, it, it's a little hard, hard though. No, it's okay. hard because I'm working and it gets a little bit challenging to get here in time. Okay. Um, well, if we planned on just, it seems like every other. Well, you know, we once could do, we, get we could just. May here, every other, this is uh, not a warrant uh, week, but if we just um, vote um, to come in and sign the warrant um, at, our, uh, at our own time frame, mm -hmm. then it really, we don't need to meet. Um, as long as somebody weeks. came in, you came in on a Wednesday, that Wednesday to sign the warrant, mm -hmm. um, it's have not a Have you voted deal. to have um, just one of you sign, or do you all um, sign the warrant currently? We so currently, currently have we voted did vote, to have but we currently one. all yeah. sign. We all okay. sign, we all yeah. look at it, but mm -hmm. um, we did yeah. vote in, because, oh, I know, because your operation, mm -hmm. and Kip was out for a little bit too, so we decided to vote that one was enough. Mm -hmm. But we all sign, yep. so for, except for that time when mm -hmm. people were out for medical reasons. Mm -hmm. so yeah, because really, that would um, be a concern, obviously, of the financial staff that we need to get yeah, the Yeah, no, that signed. vote has already been taken. So I think once we get into June, we could um, we could follow, you know, we could follow your, your schedule of Wednesdays uh -huh. because we do plan on meeting every other week, and unless yeah. there's mm -hmm. some yeah, emergency we'll just, that comes yeah. up, we'll, we'll figure that out. And we the, weren't going to meet the 22nd. And Correct. Then, yep. And, and of May twenty second. And we were going to meet the twenty eighth anyway. Right. right. Did you have? The, are you working the twenty eighth? May. No. No. Okay, that's good. And then so the fifth. You're good. In June. June. Yep. Okay. So wait. 5th. Wait. Wait a second. We're going to meet on uh, the May twenty eighth. Mm -hmm. At six, right? Yep. Okay. And then now we're going into June. June fifth. So we're going to be June 5th, okay. And 19th. And 19th and every other. Oh, okay, well that's easy. Yep. Except somebody has to figure out where, when we get to November and December. Yeah, we'll get, yeah, we'll get there. Um, All right. But I think okay. we'll just plan on, you know, if you want to plan on that, Diana, for the meantime. Sure. We'll just follow that schedule through. Yep, um, we hadn't um, planned for May 22nd. Did you want to add May 22nd? Uh, I don't think we need No. That. No, no, I don't because um, I've got something to do that night. And okay. uh, you already, yeah, yeah, you already planned something. Yep. yep. And that's my only night. And we're going to meet the 28th week, anyways. That, of that yep. week that I'm home. So, okay. you know, and we'll I be having a, presumably a, also an election sometime in June, which will be on your next agenda to call the special election. Correct. Yep. So David, okay. is, is that that will it will just be next week that's in question? But then after that, you're the okay. The fifteenth, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. 
Okay. And other than that, that's um, another. You know, that's like probably said, not going to be huge for you because we're yeah. what we're doing is we're doing two public health hearings. We're going to do tattoos um, regulations, mm -hmm. which we're basically copying all of that's North the twenty eighth. Except yeah. she's 28th. talking about not the fifteenth. The twenty eighth. Oh, I 28th. thought it was the fifteenth. No, no, oh, not okay. yet. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> all right, never mind. No, I think Dick said the twenty eighth. We were going to be ready. Okay. So the, we're doing the tattoo then, tattoo regulations on the 28th. Okay. Um, the only thing that's not the Northampton regulations is we're taking the definition of microblading from Boston, Boston's tattoo regulations because um, when I talked to Meredith O'Leary, the health director, the other day at the Mosquito meeting, she said that the only thing that they were changing and they were in the process of changing is the definition and the... Um, requirements for microblading they're going to change them to the boston one which is actually less than the one they had okay because microblading is doing the eyebrows and it's different than the eyeliner one which is a poke your eye kind so of thing. um back on the uh priorities so do you want me to just read down this list diana that we have I, and we'll I just, okay so i'll read this list and then we can go back and talk a, a little bit so um address building projects um including Town Hall, Senior Center, Library. The RFQ is ready for distribution. Um, so we'll hear from, from that. Um, address- imp You know, we should say the assessment. We're not talking Correct. about- The RFQ is out for an assessment. I mean, for the assessment, yeah. yeah. Right. I'm just, I, this was more just notes- Just a quick yeah. for note For you guys stuff. to yeah. know yeah. That to what's going on. Address infrastructure projects, including the, the wastewater treatment plant um, and underground infrastructure for Old Deerfield um, contract for Engineering to be awarded for secondary clarifier, which we're hoping to do. Um, address road status issues. So Kevin's been wrestling with statuses of roads. This has been an issue that I've heard since at least for two years. Um, we have roads in town that it should be either discontinued or make a decision on those or have legal work yes. done on that. So we do need to set yeah. um, some either some funds aside to have somebody Kevin, Kevin has money in his budget Perfect. and we are already um, we are pursuing um, the information the data to get you know then you'll to have a, to decide right. what you want to do once we know w what the status that's, of the roads yeah, are yeah exactly that's so there's you know there's a, quite a few roads in town that we have issues on um, that we want to address this year um, address drainage issues so the MVP and the hazardous mitigation planning efforts are underway on that but we you know we really need to tackle you know bloody brook and you've got culverts at Kelleher Drive and we've got the culvert up at the other end of town um, that we're working on that's um, one he's currently working on what's this is that the one on River Road he's currently working no, on? no the one on um, Mill Village is Mill Village is up by um, oh, just that one. Right yeah, by, oh. yeah by the fields there yeah, the because he's DA got a major fields. issue up on River Road yes, right we now do. Yes. we do have a major issue there we have to yes. address um, uh, we wanted to review all town uh, IMAs and regional agreements to ensure compliance uh, work with regional partners and on effective operations of shared services or uh, resources so you know South County Senior Center, SCEMS, Frontier, Union 38, just kind of look at those um, agreements. I know that, you know, Frontier has always been an issue and that they, these are bigger topics, but they should be um, addressed at some point. We kind of let them lie for well, a long always, time. What happens is they always get kicked down there. Uh, they do. So if no we one, make a no concerted effort to yeah, um, to start on that stuff, that would be, that'd be really good. Um, Establish annual meetings so uh, of elected officials in town, um, district governance. So I would love to have a uh, a meeting where we met with the water department, we met with the fire departments, we met with um, you know the, either the fire districts, and just to kind of get a what what get an understanding of you know what's the water department tackling this year, are, you know are they going up are they going up with new pipes up hillside and how's that affect I, well, Kevin and, and, and is he going to well, be well they're shutting down the tank mm -hmm. I mean, that's a huge all thing. of those things yeah. you know Which we tank they're shutting down? the one um, on top of by Ridge. stage road they're shutting it down yeah because uh, apparently they don't use it so the water's kind of stagnant. maybe but we'll find out when we have yes. a meeting with them <laughs> well, so okay. that, kinda, but, that um, kind of stuff could we could we just add on to that and say when we have the meeting we could talk about um, emergency uh, planning issues as well mm -hmm. because I mean, we tend to only get together when we have 
bad weather coming up the pike. Right. And um, I mean, people are really good about showing up, but no, it definitely. would be nice to have a non. Mm -hmm. A non-emergency meeting, right. just to and see I'm where also, people are at. And I'm also putting in for um, Homeland Security grant to do follow-up on the Deerfield River flooding. You know, mm -hmm. we had that tabletop on right. November 3rd, so we had the um, after-action report. So what we're going to do now is um, take it to second step, try to address any of the uh, after-action report recommendations but also the flooding, the additional flooding that comes down the Connecticut. So mm -hmm. that would be the second part. Yep. So that would be, those would be items that we could talk about with them, but I would really love to get an ongoing once a year, springtime, something like that, yep. where we get together and, you know, understand who the commissioners are, what they're working on, what their goals are, yep. how, how we can help as different agencies, um, you know, our different departments can help each other. Um, yep. uh, establish regular updates from reps from the school committee so we know what they're working on and other agencies in half of the town so we have all these boards you know i don't really get to hear from um our historical commission i don't really hear from you know there's certain you know certain boards that um unless i actually go to one of their meetings but i think it would be a really good idea to kind of have this kind of ongoing you know, well, just I think it would be really good to have something televised so people can see. Yeah, what, what everybody's all these working on on behalf of the residents. People are doing. I mean, they're, mm -hmm. the, they're working the hard, most, and we'd yeah, like to know what it is and, and yeah. um, thank them yep. for that work and, and move forward. Um, um, establish, establish periodic meetings with the department heads. So I'd like to have um, coming up this year. You know, uh, highway department comes in and and so they can put it on their calendar that they know. The, fire, the police department comes in this this month and gives a report on where they're at and what they're doing. The highway department comes in this month. And so they can put it on their schedule. If they have specific topics they want to, you know, they can always come to us. But if they have things that aren't like emergency, they can put it in a file and then bring it to us. We can address it on those specific nights with them. So um, just to get better uh, coordination and maybe we divvy up um, the responsibilities you know somebody might be responsible for highway department somebody might be responsible for whatever mm -hmm. um police department that kind of thing just so we have better communication with those department heads um uh, let's see update policies and boards committees uh personnel operations we're working with the general code and town council right now on that we have um we have a lot of issues that you know not issues but a lot of trainings and stuff we need to do and get under underway um uh, just to make sure our boards are up to speed on this stuff. Just speaking of which, there's um, there is a open meeting law regional training workshop. Um, so encourage all of our board members to go. Any any board member. Um, this is Thursday, May 16th at Jones Library in the Woodbury Room, 43 Amity Street, Amherst, from 5:30 to 7:30. Uh, it's free of charge, and it, you know just. Especially, we have new members that were just elected, you know, in different boards uh, around town. Um, it would be really good for them to understand, what, you know, what open meeting law requirements are. And so, but there's all kinds of that kind of stuff that we could help them with. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Reestablish um, comprehensive, organized approach to nonprofits uh, for um, contributions based on factual data. So, look at, you know, what our costs are to the town, get a true understanding of what, you know, what we're doing um, for towns and, and, and to understand all the, all the help that our nonprofits mm -hmm. do for us and recognize that they do a ton um, for the town. And um, let's see, uh, so promote economic development. So the complete streets um, policy submitted, prioritization plan is in progress. I know that Diane is working with Benoit. And the kickoff meeting, yep. Kickoff meeting to get that to get that going for the complete streets and get figure out where our priorities yeah. are for everybody in town, um, and then uh, and support we, which we did tonight. Support the 350th anniversary celebrations. Um, we had the we had the kickoff meeting here tonight. Oh, that we had was good excellent. turnout and that was Thank great you for ideas. Coming. Thank you, Chris, for coming. Yeah. Um, so, um, and then 2030 climate resiliency efforts. So one effort that Diana brought to our attention, which I'm really excited about, is to get rid of all this paper and get tablets. We have money in the budget. 
get a tablet oh and God. you can print out anything and highlight we will whatever print you want for you Karen. as necessary. But look at this is the thing. I don't have any more you bookshelf know, space. I'm running out of bookshelf space. We can't we can't do this paper it's thing ridiculous. anymore. It is it's like I'm creating I, I electronically have a packet okay. that I turn for, into a paper right, that right. I turn back for, into an electronic packet. Meanwhile, I kill a I bunch of trees. I print them out. Envelope, we throw half of this stuff away. No. For, for the 2030, Deerfield 2030 effort. You will, you you will, will do, do this. it. Yes. Yay. Yes. I knew and we'd, you can I always knew we'd print get out any page you want and <laughs> highlight it because you need to highlight. And I know you I like have, to read it. I really read it and I have stuff. to highlight it so I can That's remember okay. it. That's okay. There are highlighters on you there can, too. We, you can get highlighters yeah. right on there. <laughs> We got you. We got color. you covered. It so comes back in color. And we are working with, yeah. um, we oh actually, yeah. we want to work They with don't it. use dual disc anymore, Carolyn. <laughs> <laughs> we want to work I with. I want you to know this is a huge green effort. <laughs> I'm know, really it appreciate it. It'll be very exciting. Um, so, yeah, so that's in oh the works. God. We want to get some pricing for you and get that back to you. But also we're working, we want to work with FCAT about some of our technology Sound. issues in this room we're and also being able to. Uh, broadcast directly to the televised audience mm -hmm. whatever we put on our smart well, we do need on, to, right. we need to on our boards. I don't understand why we can't get this fixed. We, we can. We should. We can. We, we have. We're working we have on that. Money. Yes, mm -hmm. we do. Comcast. That's we right. Should be able to get this. We're going to flip That's these. Right. We have a sound guy. We yes, talked to. Yes, we've been talking, and Pat was okay. talking, getting. I mean, we're working is, on it. This kind of like a basic <laughs> thing. It is. It's been frustrating me for three years since I've been here, and it's it's going to change. Yeah. Boom. So those are just. I know those are just a few stuff, things. But, and, you know, we, we get really <laughs> bogged down in stuff going on and all the important things that come up every day. But if we don't set priorities and agendas, um, and, and there's more to this that I have in my mind, it will we'll flush out over the I, next I few know, weeks. I, I know you hit the assessment, you know, because I am, I am going to the building committee meeting on the 16th. But um, I, the assessment part is, is good. We need to keep moving forward. But I just want us to really focus ultimately that the end goal here is to get senior housing and a senior center. Mm -hmm. and, and I know we're marching forward, but I th we really need to focus on that because we, we have the buildings now. And, um, and we need participation and from our will public. Be at, right. And there is seriously grant money. Um, you know, I had thrown out this idea years, I don't know, a couple of years ago is the, you know, if we can connect this building and the whatever buildings we have, the library, whatever, um, to the underground heat pumps thing. We can get that, we can get that all installed by grants, and then our operating costs, if we don't, if their heating and cooling is paid for, you know, or is handled by the thermo well, underground I think the, thing. The assessments yeah. might flush out whether yeah. it's worth doing that or not. Well, this building no. was originally <laughs> built as a temporary building. What's that? No, no, this is, that's part of the green, uh, I mean, there's a, some green grants that you can do that when you're trying to, and then, then we can do some landscaping that would incorporate, you know, that would tie everything together. Um, Provided we keep this building and that building. And yeah, I mean, the idea is to put, if, if we had energy efficient heating and cooling underground, and then efficient parking, you know, had some kind of landscaping that had efficient parking and we put in electric charging stations and stuff like that. Those kind of things are paid for by this by the grants that are available and that's what we should be I mean we gotta be hustling for this. But and it does take a larger priority of truly direction and where we're gonna right. go in the town. I mean the assessment a focus is just mine. a step towards that. But mm -hmm. we really you know we're we're, we're you know, we've been saving the money up in the CPA, mm -hmm. and we really you need to leverage that. And you know, I don't know. We can work with the housing authority. You know, Glenn. I saw Glenn the other day at the seeds meeting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he's waiting to work with us. So, you know, it's just if we can get moving, it would be huge. Yep. Really looking forward to that. I, I mean, I just want to make sure that that's like a huge priority. Mm -hmm. It is. It is definitely a focus. Um, anybody else have anything they want to add to that? Or a couple things. Can we add sidewalks? Yeah, of course. Yes, please. So um, that way, my wife won't yell at me anymore. <laughs> we couldn't do this together. I tell you, I've been fighting this forever. Um, 
so part of the you know part of what we're working on is the uh, the complete streets yeah. project and hopefully we'll get some information like the downtown sidewalks are a mess and i hope that comes up as a priority for people but we'll see how that so, shakes so, out but so other than Dave that said? We sidewalks oh sidewalks yes, yes. definitely we're, we're um, trying we're trying to get moving on that and it's it's just it, it has to be done so we're we're Every year, that's mm -hmm. the number one complaint. Mm -hmm. And every yep. year we say, why can't we do some sidewalks? It's not and that it, difficult. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't understand it either. It. And, if and the other thing is just a pet peeve I had from the last time I was on the board. Yep. We don't have a Commonwealth of Massachusetts flag here. We do not? No. Well, let's get them. Isn't that one in right there? No. I that was it. No? No, that's oh. Army. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Saying, yes. Oh, okay. And oh. the biggest oh. pet peeve for me is this thing. Yeah. This is too small. This is old. This is the I know it's a little thing, but it's it should not be that you difficult see this to get some list? volunteers <laughs> add to it. Do so you the see aesthetics, this list? aesthetics. Please. You're talking about Maybe your a separator chair that's here. Not up to here. <laughs> your separator. <laughs> you only have this because we were we were crabby and we finally got that right. <laughs> yeah. Well, but the one they like originally a, put like up the there was all full of wrinkles. Yeah. Oh, is that right? <laughs> yeah. It was wrinkled. It's like I know these aren't huge priorities for the town, but you know how you look well and presentation how you present is very important it is important it you bring does. people in from the outside and you want to say this is deerfield and how wonderful mm -hmm. deerfield is and they sit in here and they say really i know yeah. well it sounds so, like when we look at our um at reconfiguring our meeting space for technology mm -hmm. maybe we can look at reconfiguring yeah. this mm -hmm. as well thank you yeah. um the the only other thing that um I, you know, we are constrained by open meeting law, so it would be hugely helpful if we had some way to communicate on a really consistent manner. I don't, it's, you have no time to be telling well, us what have, happens during the day when we have and a, then uh, sending out emails at the end of the day. When but she has help, we'll have time. Yeah. yeah, but you don't need, I don't think you also, I mean, I don't know if you need a daily report. I mean, well, no, these, not daily. You no, know, these are the stuff things, that came basically. Up. <laughs> Right. For the most part, mm -hmm. <laughs> and well, everything else. Yeah, but um, some, you know, if you get some somebody coming in the office or something, yeah. an issue one, came up. one of the things I do. I mean, I think the one thing that isn't on here, and so maybe you're alluding to, and and we do need to attend to more consistently. And as Trevor said, I think we've got our interviews this week for the yes. um, assistant. That's going to be huge once we have staff. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, but it's consti constituent issues. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So some of them are the road issues. Some of them are drainage issues. Um, you know, some of them are, uh, you know, other kinds of um, issues that may not be of the town's concern. Sometimes they mm -hmm. end up being more like, you know, property um, line issues and things like that. But sometimes we do, a pro, you know, get involved initially. But um, but a, I have a variety of those kinds of things, not just, you Hit know. Lists. And so yep. those are the kinds of things that, like, I have a, someone who wants to purchase a little parcel of land the town owns. So we're trying to figure out, you know, do we, you know, from Kevin, do we need the land? What was time. it for? Right. Like, what mm -hmm. were we going to do with it and then but then you do need to start putting some of these things on your agenda and start like checking yep. off these like issues because they but do consume a lot of time they do they're small items but they consume a right. large amount of but i like to try to when i bring them to you bring bring have some sense of what a resolution might be because mm -hmm. i don't think it is productive to just bring you an issue for you to without ruminate and speculate on it without really no, having a no. solution for mm -hmm. it and some of these are are pretty large issues so you know once you know we have some short staff in this office and with planning and with our office so in the goal. next couple i think maybe weeks or month or so we're going to be in i think even we're getting better every day but i, I think we'll be in a much better shape to thing. start dealing with those yep. like some of those kinds of things i don't know well, what kinds of calls you guys get if you get calls well, but i had an of, issue i did get a call today about the or i i got some notice today about the umass there was some spraying without um a, a, a notice or a card so that's still so the, we're trying so to the, figure that out the still. box isn't up yet correct the, the, nothing was in the box i was told 
um, when somebody went by and they were spraying somebody with the hazmat suit was out there today. So again, just so follow up on follow that up, and, and um, we need to. You know, I talked to Dick about making sure we have the MDS sheets, getting them up. You know, and and we really like to push back on them to do that. Right. Like that's a, a oh, lot no, of time, absolutely. right? No, it's so absolutely their so I did talk to him about that this week that we want to get. You know, we want to yep. figure out what those are so we can start getting them up. Well, and, um, Dick is back in the office tomorrow. Right. So yeah, I knew he was down gone at, today. He was down yeah. at Taunton today. Yeah. So yeah. Um, we, I'll, I'll make sure I'll follow up on. Yeah, if you could thing. just find out if they are. Yeah, I'm up, gonna call Joe and up on that and what's happened. going on and make sure we didn't. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So no, yeah, they're some supposed, of those, some they're of supposed those to have things. every. Do we have any MSDS sheets on the web that they gave us? They have already given us some. They should. Well, they had given us a whole big stack, but I guess that, that's what I wanted to know from Dick. Are we just putting them on, on the Board of Health website? or, mm -hmm. or is he, I think, I think he right. thought UMass was supposed to be mm -hmm. uh, no, putting no, them up. And, they, okay. dropped off, they dropped right. off those M, um, MSDS sheets. We're supposed to put it under the Board of Health with a, a link. link to UMass spraying, mm -hmm. and then they're just posted. And what happens is they're supposed to have built that box and put in whatever they're spraying at that with point. Flag. With you know, they're supposed to have a flag. They're supposed to have a windsock. Okay. You know, the whole nine yards. But people can then go to the box that's at the end of the street and say, you know, it's, it identifies what they're spraying. And then they're supposed to be able to go on our website and look at the MSDS sheet, which makes total sense in the sense that they're not having to post that every time. Right. Okay. Because they have set stuff that they use. Right. So, we so one of the other when things. Their open house was. I think it's the twenty eighth. You're right. It is. We're going to go to Turf Farm and then here. Okay. Okay. Um, so the other thing, just to add, so some of these things that you know Carolyn brought up tonight, some Board of Health things. So I think that's mm -hmm. the other piece you and I it talked is. a little bit about putting mm -hmm. on this list is just trying to maybe. Um, you know, since you are the Board of Health and that is a fairly significant Board responsibility that maybe you start having dedicated separate, Board of Health meetings mm -hmm. at least maybe once a month or once right. a quarter. I don't know what, you know, I, in, in all communities I've worked in, generally Boards of Health would meet once a month and right. deal with whatever the Board of Health, well, you know, whatever used stuff. To be split. Right. And well, we used always to be have a part, it. A heading for Board of Health. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we always yeah. post it as a Board of Health meeting. Yeah. But when I, but we sometimes we touch on Board of Health things, but we don't dedicate it to like the health agent coming in and saying, "Here's, here's what's going what on with su su septic, and here's what's going on with food inspections, and here's Correct. what's going on with that's what with, I mean about reporting. I, I inspect, yeah. you know, camp camp inspections. Here's how we're doing with this, and you know that kind. We don't. Oh, I, I, yeah. I think that's an excellent idea to actually mm -hmm. have a dedicated um, monthly yep. Yep. separate meeting on our agenda exactly mm -hmm. because um we usually always combined it we right. had a separate section as dave said Selected so we had the so uh, opportunity to do it twice a month but we only just address stuff that came yeah, up i but think you're shortchanging the board of health mm -hmm. by not yeah. no that's dedicating true. some time yep. that's true okay. i i would love to do that great now okay. i truthfully um there hasn't been as much interest yeah no we're so I'm glad. Um, that, speaking of which, um, just to put on your calendars, um, on Tuesday, um, June 25th, is the MAPCO Mohawk Area Public Health Coalition annual meeting. Okay. It's at the Greenfield Country Club. Yep. Um, it's four to eight so that we qualify for food, but it's really um, mm -hmm. like five or six. What, so okay. I'll find out when the exact business you know, program comes. But um, it, we're, go we're going to do, what we're doing is envisioning where we're going as an um, emergency uh, response as boards of health. Um, there is some, some opportunity and discussion that potentially we might um, merge with the regional um, emergency, uh, you know, the REPC, but um, because the REPC is having uh, the REPC is having a hard time trying to um, cover everything that they're supposed to do as as well as MAPCO. So if we merge them together, then we get full-time staff. You know, there's funding for full-time staff, and we'll be able to talk about more. Um, just like you have has hazardous mitigation, instead of you know you're all hazards. This would be an all hazards kind of stuff instead of just public health or just REPC. 
you know, hazmat response and stuff, mm -hmm. because there's so much overlap. Mm -hmm. And so we're combining the resources um, will allow us to do more things. And it's kind of exciting because there's potential for, you know, more trainings and more mm -hmm. um, exercises, which is, you know, at any time there's any kind of on hands, you know, training. It and, helps people and practice exercise and get a, and it get just a memory seeing bone people, going. Yeah, mm -hmm. just seeing people is really yep. good for the exercises. So if, if we could sponsor one exercise a year, um, like we did with the, the flooding tabletop in yep. November, that was really it has good. significant impact because we had a hundred people in one room, you know, talking about dealing with the flooding of the Deerfield River. And it was so exciting. I, I, I mean, I thought it was really fantastic. Mm -hmm. So, and Homeland Security, you know, because I sit on it, well, an update, it seems to be pretty supportive. Speaking of that kind of stuff, um, it seems like just to report out that the, um, the committee that's looking at the 800 system seems to be moving along. Yes, I just I mean, we had, had money in our budget this year for radios that um, Chief had in his budget to get over to the 800 system, and there is good... Um, movement forward in that Actually, direction. we don't have to buy them because they're going to be included. Um, I just had a meeting yesterday, um, and uh, the first group, the first, um, this is only a few notes, the chief has a whole plan, mm -hmm. but um, starting this summer, um, Greenfield Fire, South County, EMS, and our police department will be the first group that will go, on, go live on September 1st. Right. And, um, and this will, they're working on it over the summer. The uh, frequency allocations, Montague um, and Greenfield um, and Shelburne Control, you know, their main mm -hmm. um, dispatches will go on. I think they're going, I think pretty, like next week or something, or, or they're starting next couple weeks. Um, so that's happening over the summer. September 1st is us, um, South County Police, Greenfield Fire, and um, the second group it, um, is more along the um, I-91 corridor. Uh, no, Mo Montague and Gill are included um, in that first group, but and along the corridor. The second group in January has, because um, the, these groups have the best coverage. Mm -hmm. So the second group is January 1st, which has uh, poorer coverage like Shootsbury, Warwick, mm -hmm. you know, that group. So the, basically everybody, right, everybody will be online by 20, you know, summer of 2020. That'd be great. So and huge. Are they are looking at taking over the towers, right? From uh, the State, no, this is new town, you know, this is the right. 800 system. No, I know, the, but weren't they going to take over our towers and or use that space for it? Um, they might what use these, some of the space to increase right. the 800 coverage. Correct. But we, uh, our assessments to the FERCOG will cease. Right. And they are giving us um, roughly 1,300 free radios. So our, our town will get our radios so we don't have to buy them. I mean, we had that's appropriated yep. 45,000, but we don't have to buy them. So that's, that's pretty ex exciting. That's huge um, news. Yes. That was the biggest worry. Yes, that was where everyone's worried. But they allocated 1,300 um, radios for the county, and we are going online first in the state. And that means that um, we're saving about $36,000 assessment every year. Mm -hmm. and, it, and if lightning hits a tower, it's the state responsibility. Right. It's not our responsibility to fix yep. it. I mean, this is huge. This is so huge, I cannot believe it. It is. It's big news for it's sure. It's multi-millions of dollars that we don't have to spend. And so um, we really need to thank John Pachorik mm -hmm. for all the work he put into this to make this happen. And, um, yeah, their whole committee has been great he's, on this. He's, good conversation, you know, good yeah. communication. So. Yeah. So anyway, I'm very excited about that. So any other, do you, do you have anything uh, you want to so I just want to, so for this list, so you've added um, sidewalks, senior housing, the, adding the Commonwealth flag, and possibly, you know, reevaluating mm -hmm. the space, redoing the yep. space. I guess the question is, do you have a, as far as the next steps, do you want, are you going to further look at this yes. and prioritize it? Yes, I think we should prioritize those in order, like of 
you know, yeah. what, what can be done right away and what, what can't be done right away. Um, that would be so. good. I think because, like I said, like um, the building committee has a RFQ that's mm -hmm. nearly, it's been developed and there's a few little things, but pretty much ready. So I think that's something you guys should decide if that's in fact how you want to do it and if you want to meet with them or what you mm -hmm. want to do with that. Yeah. Um, but there's, like I said, there's the road status things. There's things that are ready to kind of move along. And I want to know with you've got debt exclusion questions, you've got we the do. sewer, you've got all this stuff, yep. kind of what you want to see, you know, coming forward more quickly on your agendas than, right. you know, And I think not, if we take, you know, a week to look at that and everybody come back with their yep. prioritization and then maybe we have a a more in-depth discussion on kind of prioritizing that list. Yeah. Yeah. And in the meantime, there are, all these things are, you know, moving forward. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. It's not just like, like they're just waiting for it. But. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, wow. I think Bruce had a Bruce did. Well, yeah, oh, sure, please, come on up. He's got his pen. Oh, and I should have known. <laughs> uh, there are some priorities that I believe that I uh, should look at. Um, North Main Street Bridge. Yes. Is, Thank um, you. One that should be a high priority. Um, Kevin yeah. has mentioned that multiple times. Uh, street lighting. Yep, I got oh, that. I, oh, there's a report. Oh, yeah, uh, Bruce, yeah. there'll be a report at the end of the month. Good. I have a guy coming to look at that. Yep. yep. Um, there should be a finalization of the personnel handbook. I don't know where that is at. Yep. No, Bruce, that's on there. It's update yep. policies and that's okay. the personnel operations. So, so we policies, have a, would that include bylaws, town bylaws? Um, well, right now we have we're doing um, we're doing two things. We're working on updating all of our um, our annual things that we do for board and committee members when they're reelected or reappointed. All of our um, open meeting law, public records, harassment things that we expect them to sign off. So we're updating those. Concurrently, we're working with general code and we're doing a whole general bylaw review. And then specifically, we're also looking at personnel policies both from evaluating the personnel board compensation piece, your input on that, which you just send some you know, comments on changing the bylaw. And then also we're looking at the policies. We did, we sent some comments on changing the bylaw? Or I got something that you had come, I thought there were some comments. Oh, I, I don't know if it's I we it looked at on Monday's yeah. meeting, but basically some Monday's changes meeting. proposed to the personnel bylaw, but also the policy, the bylaw, personnel bylaw right now, um, the policies are is a bylaw. So yes, we are looking at the policy, you know, looking at making them, I don't know if we'll take them out as a bylaw, but looking at those and trying to update those mm -hmm. policies right. as, as, you know, not, we haven't gone right. to town meeting to right. do that, but we're right. looking right. at getting them from town council, making sure we have all FM, you know, FMLA and mm -hmm. the sexual harassment. Oh yeah, we have, we're, we're in deep, the, we have, yeah, just, we're, just we're in all major the kinds problems. of stuff mm -hmm. of yep. If we ever update. have an issue it's come up. It's old, right? There's nothing there's that's nothing, been done in Nothing in there. Right. Uh, that yeah. Relative to current law. Yep. Yeah, there's a lot of, and it's a, but it's the same with the stuff we've been giving, you know, handing out to elected officials too. Mm -hmm. So we need to update all that. So, so town council is working on all of that, and then in June we're also going to have a meeting uh, scheduled a training for all elected, appointed, and staff. And I would ask you that you guys, of course, to try to make it mandatory as yes. much as you can. Yep. Um, Do you know when it we is? haven't? We don't have oh. the date, but it'll be toward the end of June, hopefully. Um, okay. We're trying to get it, you know, get everyone's schedule. Um, and, you know, basically, like I said, mm -hmm. do a little bit of training. We haven't done an annual training in some time to yeah, update our time. update. Uh -huh. Very time. And the yeah. laws have changed. There's the, yeah. the, the Equality of Pay Act. There's the Pregnancy Act. There's a lot of things, like Bruce Social is saying, that have we been haven't added that you know, we haven't even, even you know. Right. So, yeah. So we request yeah. it. So I mean, you don't, it's, you don't have a, any rules or regulations to provide it. Mm. Um, one, two more, two more things. Um, one is an ADA self-evaluation transition plan. That should be one of our highest priorities. And I know Mass Office and Disabilities requested, sent a letter almost seven months ago requesting that the town of Deerfield um, set up a commission, a local commission. You did that, mention that recently. And that hasn't been established yet. Uh, you, I, think, I thought we did do that. Because you brought that up before, uh, right? Yeah, seven months ago. Yeah, I, I thought we did do no, that. No, you, you just nothing happened. I nothing? Think, I don't okay. think so. Um, but the ADA self-evaluation transition plan can be 
um, paid for through um, uh, one of the programs like Complete Streets or one of the governor's programs. Maybe that was the way I was thinking that it was. And FERCOG has yeah. done several for other communities, so. Yeah. Um, but the setting up a commission and doing the self-evaluation plan, two important things that the town should do. And one other thing to consider is a, a permanent building committee um, that was discussed, and right now we have an advisory commission uh, committee. Um, and, uh, so that's all the, the high prior, uh, what I think are priorities that should be included in your list. And I, I would like to get an update on New England Bakers as mm -hmm. part of my public comment section. Um, we, we were going to um, do some outreach now that we're done town meeting. Have okay, Diana I think do, having do that outreach. site vacant is, yeah. is not a good thing for right. the town. Right. Um, no, I know that they're, they're definitely planning. Uh, they have money from the state to do this. And so we... Well, I, did, I think we should have an explanation yeah. to the public to right. it's been why long, this it's been hasn't proceeded long. in five years. Yep, it has. Yeah. It's taken them a long time. And, I mean, they've gone through a lot and of why changes. We, and if we are going to spend money to extend the sewer, why are we spending the money? There was some discussion of spending $28,000 to extend the water line. Oh, the so water line. Water no, line. Water that line. was to our, to our facility. To our no, facility, yeah, not which to would then feed the new two facilities? Uh, no, just us and Dumont. They have their own. New England Bakers would take their own water off of the other. Off the other Off street. the other problem area. Off yeah. the other problem area. Yeah, we just didn't want our water line to come under their building. Yeah. I understand that. So their water is not going to come under their building either. Mm -hmm. No, no they're they'll just redo theirs on their uh, own, either off of Sugarloaf Street or uh, oh, is it Coates? No, Coates I, Avenue. I think Coates that Avenue. needs to be resolved. Mm -hmm. and it does. It's but been the dragged. whole process. We're sitting here with no tax tax money coming in, mm -hmm. is my understanding, on that site, other right. than what the value of the land is, mm -hmm. and that was cheap. Yeah, it was cheap. Uh -huh. So uh, we need to be pushing them to either. Mm -hmm. Do something, or let's decide that they can give it back for us, yep. and we can resell it. And that needs to be developed. Um, just yep. my public comment. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thanks, Thank Bruce. you, Bruce. Any other public comment? Thank you, Chris, for coming, though. I'll take a motion to adjourn. Does anyone else has anything? I move that we adjourn. I'll Thank second you. that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all and have a great night. Uh -huh.